Good morning. Tell the person next to you, it is a good morning. Are you sure? Facebook, tell the people next to you, good morning, and put on that chat, good morning, church. And if you're a multitasker kind of person, you can go ahead and chat on the, on the Facebook. I'll give you guys time to do that because after that, we're going to be getting into the word and see what the word of God says for us today. Amen. So yeah, tell the person next to you, thank you for being here. It is so good to see a lot of people here today and praise God, family sitting together and and socially distanced with all the others. We want to praise God for the good weather today. We want to praise God for the cloudy weather. I hope you guys put your sunscreen on because it's still pretty strong even with the clouds. So um, this is going to be a good time because God, God is taking good care of us. Amen? Amen? He is taking good care of us. Can you tell the person next to you, take good care of yourself today. <laughs> We're going to talk about that today. Um, let's go ahead and read our Bibles in the book of Jude. Can someone guess how many chapters are there in the book of Jude? <laughs> if you've read the entire counsel of God, I will find out right now. Just kidding. There's only one chapter. So we're going to go to Jude chapter 17. <laughs> Just kidding. Verse 17 all the way to 23. And this is in the New Living Translation. It says, but you, my dear friends, must remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ predicted. They told you that in the last times there would be scoffers whose purpose in life is to satisfy their ungodly desires. Tell the person next to you, ungodly desires. These people are the ones who are creating divisions among you. Does this sound familiar? Yeah. They follow their natural instincts because they do not have God's spirit in them. Verse 20. But you, dear friends, read it along with me if you have it with you right now. But you, dear friends, must build each other up in your most holy faith. Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit and await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ who will bring you into eternal life. Tell the person next to you, eternal life. Put that on the chat. Eternal life. I want to be there. I want to get there. And I want to be here now. In this way, you will keep yourself safe in God's love. You guys want to keep yourself safe in God's love? Yeah. Here we go. Verse 22. And you must show mercy to those who are fa whose faith is wavering. Rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Show mercy to still others, but do so with great caution, hating the sins that contaminate their lives. Amen. For, you, for, for those of you guys, people in the back, can you guys hear me okay? Good? Okay, we have really good sounds, and I want to praise God for that. But how many of you guys are sick of all the things that's going on in our world today? Facebook, if you're sick of the things that's going on on Facebook, put an amen over there. Because we know there is division going on happening in our society. And I think we can all agree that, that there have been many things going on in our communities these days that stir up a lot of division. Right? How about in your own communities like um in in your own uh i would say like workplaces for those of you guys who are going to work when you go to the grocery store when you go to different houses and and you know there's different flags and different kinds of signs that are being thrown and people take out someone's signs and someone put another sign and and i know of a family that put like a a sign of you know their 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 political party and and someone removed it like multiple times and then finally they put another one and they put a track on it <laughs> They put like a gospel track on it. So hopefully they'll at least read that track, even if they hate the sign. But there is no surprise that we have been hearing pastor talk about the last of the last days. All the things that we've been going through, there have been a lot of stuff that you probably experience in your own homes, in your own um, families. And guess what, guys? Thanksgiving is coming up. Better be ready for them conversations because Thanksgiving is coming up. And if you ain't ready, you're never going to be ready. You got to be ready now. So there is no surprise that that's going on because the thing is the world is deteriorating, unfortunately. It's going to come to an end. And I don't know about you guys, but, you know, I follow a lot of like minimalistic type lifestyle and, and stuff like It's very inspiring. I don't think I can ever reach to that level maybe one day, but they really just keep what they need. And when they have to let go of stuff, 
They have, there's no attachment. There's no like, oh, cool, I don't need it, I'll let it go. It's not like, oh, I really love this, you know, and then all of a sudden, it's really hard to let go of those things because they love it so much. That's why in the book of Revelations, when the people had to die for Christ, they did not worry about it because they did not love their lives so much that even if they had to die for him, it did not matter. How much do we love ourselves today? And there got, there's got to be a balance, right? Because even in these common things that we see in, in today, today's culture, we know that the, the big hope that we have is that the Lord is coming back soon. Amen? I don't know if you get excited or you get scared. There's two reactions to that, right? Like, oh, the Lord's coming back soon? Yay! It's come, he's coming back soon. Or, really? I got to, you know, get my life together. But the thing is, it doesn't matter where you are right now. What God wants for us is that we would be ready for when he comes back. You may think post, um, pre, post, whatever, um, what is it? Like pre, mid, and all these trips, trips, you know, like you can believe whatever the conviction God has for you, but I think at the end of it all, are you ready? You know, if it, what if it's pre? What if it's mid? What if it's post? Will you be ready to go through the tribulations if we has to be later on that the Christians has to go go through all these things and then all of a sudden Jesus comes back or maybe in the middle of, of the sufferings that we go through and boom, Jesus comes back. What if before that happens, Jesus comes back? Either way, he's going to come back. I think the common denominator here is that he's going to come back. But are we ready for his return? Are we ready for that? Because here's the thing. The world is already full of division. The world is already full of scoffers. And we'll, we'll talk about that because that's just the way it is. That's just the way God has ordained all these things. And because of human beings' sinfulness, we know that it falls right into what God has seen way before all these things has even happened. But here's the thing. Tell the person next to you, and for those of you guys who are on Facebook, put this on the chat. But you are different. But you are different. We know that there is still hope in, you, in the Lord. Amen? Do you have hope in the Lord? Do you guys have hope in the Lord? Are you cold now? <laughs> the sun just like went away and all of a sudden you're freezing. Welcome to the microclimates in California. If you are a believer in the Lord, you know you are just passing through and the world will fall, fade away and, and fall away and all that stuff and all the pr problems in this world will one day soon be gone and we are only going to be left with one thing our spirit our relationship with the lord is our spirit alive or is it dead without christ the simple answer is you're dead in the lord you're dead as a as a spirit when you don't have christ and when you have christ he awakens that he blows in that that breath of life in you and all of a sudden it's like you're living for the first time you know you're like living for the first time. And the reason why I'm talking about taking good care of ourselves and, and things like that, because the world is divided and it's deteriorating. We already know that there are people who are causing division both in the church and in the world. Can you believe it? I mean, we're a small church, so obviously it's, it's easier to kind of reach to people and stuff compared to like maybe churches that have a lot more than us, 500, 1,000, you know, I can't even imagine maybe having 300. It's hard to already reach people with like 100 or 150 people. How much more, even more? I could imagine the different divisions that might be causing in the church. There are scoffers both in the church and in the world. Think about this, guys. They are in the church and they're also in the world. There are people who are living for themselves in the church and in the world. I'm, I'm gonna explain this for in a bit. There are people who are, um, do not have the spirit of God living in them, both in the church, and you might think, whoa, how can a person be in church and not have the spirit of God? Oh, I'll tell you, it happens. It happens and it's here today. That person is here today. Oh, you're just like, oh, is it me, Lord? Well, that's a good question. And you got to ask God, is it me, Lord? And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not saying that, that there, is, there are scoffers who are the church because that is a different terminology, right? Like that's a different way to say it. I'm saying in the church because physically they are there. They come into the church. They go to church. They go to all these places because everyone is welcome at church, right? Like we all get to come in together. But the thing is that this is a real thing happening right now. And, and it's important for us to understand, look, am I that person that is scoffing, making divisions and, and um, not bringing hope to people or do not have the spirit of God in me? We got to remember that because we may be in church. You may be watching online and we are all here in church, right? In church physically or online. 
But are we a part of the list that I just referred to in Jude? Because that is happening right now, right? But this is a real thing. But real followers, real followers and disciples, the real ones know. The real ones have the conviction. The real ones have this spirit of God in them. And this is something that we all have to continually grow ourselves into. This is not going to happen in five minutes because if it was, that's great. I think we'd have a better world, we'd have a better church, we'd have a, a better society, we'd have a better community, we'd have a better county, we'd have a better state. If discipleship and sanctification happened in five minutes, that would be amazing. Unfortunately, it happens for a lifetime. It happens forever. Are you guys still here? Yes. Awesome. So big reason why we need to take care of ourselves in this day and age so we can take care of others so God has, as God has called us to. Okay, it says in Mark 12, 30 to 31, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No commandment, no other commandment is greater than these. What does the Bible talk about taking good care of ourselves and of others? And that's what I want to talk about to everybody today. The fact that we have all these things that are happening in this world. You know, just before today, that just before we had the service, you know, we have all kinds of commotion going on with our media, um, trying to put things together. And I feel I'm like, I'm already exhausted. We haven't even started. Just like all these things just running through our minds. Like, how can we make this work? How can we make this video work and that video work? How can we make, you know, it's kind of chaotic. And that's not even the world. That's just like media. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But what about the world? There's all kinds of stuff. And I had to sit back there and worship God and, and just quote, take care of myself at that moment and say, God, I'm going to be quiet with you right now and let you take care of everything that's going on here. I'm going to let you take care of everything because sometimes we, we like to, to just know what is, what's going to happen, be in control of stuff and things like that because we're human beings. The moment, the moment someone hurts you, what happens is you grab on, on right away. That's just, that's just the nature of being a, a person, not even just a believer, but a person or a human being. And so this is the reason why God is calling us, take care of yourself. And the simplest, if I were to summarize this message today, take care of yourself because you need to take care of others. Take good care. I'm not just saying take care. And you guys know that the self-care movement is huge ever since like maybe the past 10, 15 years or whatever. And that always kind of... Um, that always fascinated me because I know that they always like to say, go for a walk, you know, you know, be mindful of the things around you and stuff like that. And then it goes really further out where it just like sometimes become very unbiblical. And so I'm just like, there are some good things to this, but yet there are things that are just not what God or Christ had. Like if, if self-care has gone to a point where it's all about you and no longer drawing you closer to God, I would say you've gone to the extreme. I would say you've gone to the unscriptural side of self-care. I'm not even going to use that word. I'm just going to say, take good care of yourself. Why do we do this? You know, it's, it's the whole, the world sees it that way and it's huge right now. You know, the whole anxiety thing, we, we all experience a level of anxiety, but there are people who go through it in a very, very deep level. And I understand that because I know that everybody's going through things a little bit differently. I wouldn't be surprised that anyone would be anxious in today's day and age. No, no one, I wouldn't be surprised because look at what's going on around us. It's easy to feel so anxious about things. But the thing about that, it's not inherently bad. But just think about this. Let me read to you this um, quote. It's medication by distraction, not redemption. Don't just look at the tree and be like, oh, I feel refreshed. I feel refreshed and God, I worship you for creating this tree. Difference. There's a difference, right? Seeing God differently and moving into the direction where God calls you, where God is discipling you and, and sanctifying you. This, this whole self-care movement, I'm not bashing or anything. I love it, but I want to make sure I'm biblical and scriptural in the way I apply this in my life. Practicing forgetfulness rather than pursuing forgiveness. That's huge. Here's another, another quote that I want to read. These tactics do not even pretend to address your needs or offer a cure. 
looking at a tree, going outside for a walk, that's great. Going for a run, if you're like, oh, I'm really stressed right now, I'm going to go for a run, which I do, which I like to do. I, I like to decompress my mind by doing something. Unfortunately, I do physical things like going on a really crazy hike or something of that sort. But when I come back, I just feel like I'm more on fire than, than I have ever been because I'm feeling refreshed. Everybody's a little bit different. But what this is talking about is these tactics do not even pretend to address your needs to end or to offer a cure. If you think that a tune or a labyrinth or a squirrel are going to heal the things that haunt you, you are more helpless than you even realize. A tune covers the silence you fear. Remember? Remember this? Okay, a tune covers the silence you fear, but it will never cover the sin you carry. A squirrel might find a nut, but he will never find freedom from guilt and shame. A lonely walk in a corn maze never leads to reconciliation between estranged friends or family members. And here's what I would say. That's the world's way. We have the way. We have Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. Believers are different. Romans 12, 2, I was just reading this the other day. It says, be transformed by God by, by changing the way you think. Do you ever want to know God's will? Come tonight. Okay, Paul's going to talk about it with the young adults. <laughs> Making wise decisions. But as we, as God reprograms the way we think, as we allow him to change the way we think, even in everything that's going on right now, that's taking care of ourselves. Do you know that? Taking good care of ourselves is going to the root of our ultimate need, and that is transformation transformation it's not going to be a song it's not going to be yes that may help god may use that god may use a hike to get you off of your mind from something but here's the thing that's never going to heal you that's never going to heal you of your loneliness that's never going to heal you of all the troubles that you're going through that's never going to heal you of the confusion that you're going through you know what's going to heal that god the Spirit of God coming in and, and going through all the crevices of your brain and putting it all back together and, and this whole neuroscience thing. They're just figuring out what God has already done. God, all these people are just figuring out and putting definitions and labels into what God has already known before he even created you and I. Spiritual care by far is the most important self-care you can focus on and one of which all others will spring forward from. And this is the reason why sometimes just going for a walk is not gonna, really going to cure it because you've got to go back and say, let me look at my spirit today. Let me go back and, and be quiet with God. That's why we need to take good care of, of ourselves, right? The care you really need. Let me read to you guys this quote. It's a little bit long, but it's, it has such good points that I can't just be like, pretend like it was mine. This is, this is something that I want you guys to hear. The care you really need is not buried somewhere deep inside of you. It's not. And that's what the self-care movement is, is going for. And again, this is not a bad thing. I'm just refocusing our attention on what this, quote, self-care is like. And I don't know if, if you guys ever heard that before. Raise your hand if you've heard this self-care thing. Like, take care of yourself, you know, self-care. Also. Okay, that's good. Um, if you really, the care you really need is not buried somewhere deep. Oh, my gosh, I'm running out of time. Waiting to be unlocked by some dessert or diversion. No, you need the healing, forgiving, restoring, and transforming grace of God who loves you. Only someone stronger than your greatest weaknesses, bigger than your worst failures, and brighter than your deepest darkest, darkness, darknesses could address the things you fear or regret. Are you afraid of something? Listening to a song or a classical music, you, even if you listen to all four movements, it's not going to heal it. Mozart wrote really good music, but he ain't going to heal the sin that needs forgiveness from God. If you're drawing on the ocean of God's grace to you through Jesus Christ, then your habits might make all the difference. Listen to this. Our habits of grace are daily and weekly rhythms of seeking God rhythms of seeking god you know what rhythm is it's basically like this in music we call it rhythm is is the is the is the groupings of different beats it could be long it could be short and they all group together sometimes they're phrases sometimes they're like really long thing and and they're separated by either rests or they're separated by just complete silence or whatever it might be right so rhythm there is a rhythm it, it's like this i go to church I go to work, I go to sleep. Rhythm, go to work, go to school, go to whatever. You don't even go to school, you just go to online school, and then you go back. You know, you have a rhythm. And when your rhythm is off, 
what typically happens when you clap on one and three instead of two and four. I'm just kidding. If you got that, that's, you're pretty savvy. Our habits of grace are daily and weekly rhythms of seeking God, of surrendering our dreams and anxiety to him, of spreading his fame in all we do are the means by which we experience real, genuine happiness, and they are the highway along which we will begin to experience freedom from sin. Do you want freedom from your sin? Do you want freedom from anxiety? Do you want freedom from worries? Do you want freedom from all these things that you're going through, all the confusion and the things that I don't know what to do? You want freedom from that and all the awful consequences in our, in our lives. Here's another quote. Grace is too strong to leave us passive, too potent to let us wallow in the mire of our sins and weaknesses. That's beautiful. That's awesome because what the, what the Apostle Paul said, say, my grace is sufficient for you, Jesus says, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Just take a moment right now and just say power, power. I receive that power. Do you need power today? So where does this weary soul find rest and relief from stress? Jesus says, come to me, all who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. It's not, it's not saying go take a walk. Yeah, you may take a walk, but rest in the Lord as you walk. Rest in the Lord as you sleep. Where does the anxious soul find peace? Do not be anxious about anything. It's all, this is all in the word of God. You know, if we would just take time in our rhythm to go back to what the word of God says, we, it would be easier. I would say it would be so much easier. I'll save you a lot of money. Just go to the word of God. Where do we find strength to keep battling our sins, overcoming our weaknesses, and running hard through this difficult life into eternity? Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Are you still here? Yeah. Any habit or activity can be means of joy, peace, and healing, but only if it brings you to God. Work, hobbies, activities, whatever it is, does that bring you closer to God? Even pursuing relationships, does that bring you closer to God? All these things that we, we endeavor ourselves, opening a business, closing a business, does that bring you closer to God? Does it make you more like Jesus? Because otherwise, you ain't taking good care of yourself. You're actually pulling yourself away from the good. This is what I always tell a lot of young people and a lot of young adults. If it's something that you're pursuing and it's causing you to be removed from God, removed from ministry, removed from all these things, you better start thinking. Because God never allows anything to come into our lives. And pastor has taught us this. God never allows anything to come into our lives just to pull us away from him. That does not come from God. And I'll just say that straight out. And what can we do today? Goodness gracious, time is running. Jude 20, it says, I'm going to read from the, the living translation. And I think it's over there. It says, but you, dear friends, must build your lives ever more strongly upon, upon the foundation of our holy faith, leaning, learning to pray in the power and strength of the Holy Spirit. I love this part with what they translated this into. Stay always within the boundaries where God's love can reach and bless you. Wait patiently for the eternal life that our Lord Jesus Christ in his mercy is going to give you. Three things that you can do today. Build yourself up in the most holy faith. How can I take good care of myself? Build yourself up in the most holy faith. My question to you is how are you building yourself up? What are you doing to build yourself up? Number two, pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you know how to do that? Do you know how to pray in the power of the Holy Spirit? You got to start hanging out with the Holy Spirit so you know how to pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. Because if you don't know, you know, when you hang out with people, you start sounding like them. It's like, oh, you sound like this. I remember, you know, we, we used to, I used to work for this amazing organization and, and um, we all sounded like each other because we're like together all the time, you know, jokes and all that stuff. Like it's almost the same because we're always hanging out with each other. But that's the same, same thing with us, with the Holy Spirit, the more we hang out with the Holy Spirit. And here's the thing, if you're a believer, the Holy Spirit lives in you. Sometimes we just have to draw it out because there is still this, the Bible says, at war, constant at war. There's the flesh aspect of us and there's the Holy Spirit trying to constantly change us into a new person. You start talking like the Holy Spirit, I'm going to know you've been hanging out with the Holy Spirit. And it's not just like Christianese. Because, you know, when you have to go to another country, you got to learn their lingo. They don't sound like, you know, I can't 
speak English all the time if you go to the Philippines, for example, I gotta speak like they are. I can't, I, they understand and I can like speak in English, which is great, they, they're bilingual people, a lot over there, a lot of us are bilingual over there, which is great, but the thing is, it could only get old and eventually, you're gonna have to start speaking the language of that country you're in. What about the kingdom of God? You know, people always make these excuses that like, well, I'm still in this world, that's why I slip here and there. And I know we talked about this on Wednesday night Bible study, you know, like the whole cussing thing. And, and if you need more information, that, that's why I got to come to Bible study because I can't talk a lot about that here. And I would say it gotta, it's got to change because that's also part of taking good care of ourselves, right? Because we, we are now a part of a new kingdom, a new country, quote unquote, a spiritual country where the language is only the Holy Spirit's language. And sure, we got to speak the language in the world, obviously, right? But that's how it is. But I'm talking about the, the fruit of that language. Are you guys getting what I'm, I'm saying here? Our behavior reveals our heart. God calls us to deny our hopeless attempts to justify ourselves and find life apart from Christ. Keep yourself in God's love. Stay within the boundaries and wait patiently for the Lord. And I'm going to close with this. Number two, we take good care of ourselves because God calls us to take good care of others. Why did Jesus always have to go up to the side of the mountain to pray by himself? Why? Because he has to recharge. He has to recharge. So in order for him to have a, a powerful ministry like he did. What ministry do you have in your own workplaces? How powerful are you? My question is how much are you charging with the Holy Spirit before you go out there and minister? Before you go out there and serve? Before you go out there to work? Because workplaces, it, it may seem secular. But really your performance there basically, I would say, reflects what kind of charging is going on inside of here this is the important thing why we need to take care of our inside because otherwise it shows on the outside you know and you can't just say oh that's not my job that's not my ministry here's the thing though jesus did not exempt every person for ministry he said we got to take care of ourselves in order for us to take care of others you might think oh i'm not there yet let me tell you if you have jesus you're there you're in the game as Christine Kane said, I love what she said about like, there is no, there is no, uh, what do you call it? Like, there are no Christians on the stands. The witnesses are up in heaven and they're watching us when we're all running that marathon. There's no one, you know, there's no one like cheering for you here. They're all up there. And sure, they may be us. We are cheering for, the, for each other because in a marathon, you might be like, hey, you want water or whatever? In a hike, you know, we wait for each other and be like, yeah, let's go. But ultimately, it's your own walk. It's your own race. It's your own. Are you going to make it, guys? Are you going to make it? Tell the person next to you, are you going to make it? Am I going to make it? The world's going to fade away. Christians on Facebook, are you going to make it? Are we going to make it? Believers are called to take care of each other. That's the second greatest commandment. And there are definitely seasons where we know we need to restore and we need to build ourselves up. And I was talking to someone the other day. I said, treat this season in your life as a restoration process treat this person in your life person this this season in your life as as a recovery you know i do this hit workout stuff and they do 45 seconds of like doing this workout and then you have 15 second recovery and they were saying the recovery how well you recover is just as important as the actual workout jay you can confirm this with me because i know you're the guru right here but when it comes to recovery how are we recovering after here, do we take a nap? I'm just, just talking about this, the superficial stuff. I'm talking about like the meaty stuff, the, the, the spiritual stuff inside. How are we replenishing our souls? How are we growing ourselves? You know, how are we, is it all like a chore and it becomes like this more giving than it is? You know, you can't pour out out of an empty cup. If your cup is empty, you're, what are you going to pour? Air, nothing. You know, it's, it's just the way it is. And there are seasons where we have to constantly fill ourselves up. That's why the reason that rhythms of renewal, I love this book that I read in the beginning of this year. There's rhythms of renewal that we need to build in into ourselves. No one can do this for you. Only you can. I can teach Julia how to do it, but she still has to execute it herself. I can't do it for her. 
you know otherwise I'll, I'll be cheating and that's not what we're what it is and that's the reason why you're tired is because you know your people are depending on you when when everybody's gotta take care of themselves too we all gotta lift our weight we all gotta bring our own weight and when we go out on a backpacking trip i just love the group i always go with because everybody's self-sufficient even though we need we might be able to share some things, but everyone's got their own tent. Everybody's got their own back pad or whatever. I'm like, did you bring your pad or did you bring your this? I didn't have to worry about this. So it's like, they came prepared. They came to, to do this together. And when we need each other, look, we still encourage you. That's the same thing for us. We all got to pack our own pack, 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 back, pack. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. <sighs> Sorry, Kim Marlin. You're going to play for a while. Get those progressions going. Jude 22, it says, you must show mercy to those whose faith is wavering, because that's a real thing right now. A lot of people's faith are wavering in this day and age. There are those who are wavering. My answer, my question is, are you? How's your faith? Pastor asked this last week. Is your faith wavering in this, during this pandemic or during COVID-19 season? Verse 23, rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. You know how it is when you go on a plane, when they tell you to like put on your mask or whatever for the for the breathing mask if in case something happens to the plane you got to put yours yours first and then you can put someone else's if they can't do it for themselves but you got to put yours first so rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment rescue them be the help they need who are these people in your life there are people around us here they look okay right now but for all you know there's stuff going on in their lives that you didn't know about and they need you you need them this is, this is a teamwork here. Show mercy to still others, but do so, and this is the caution that the Bible is telling us, but do so with great caution, hating the sins that contaminate their lives. Why? Because sometimes you fall into the same sins you're trying to get them out of. You know, you're trying to help others, but all, all in all, all the help that you're doing is actually you falling in that same ditch. And God, and the Bible is referring to this as like something that we need to be aware of and be careful from. We could look all good. And I, I do this myself. I check all the time. This, this is tough. It's, I mean, I could only imagine pastor, right? Like the weight on his shoulder taking care of us here every single Sunday, telling us all the stuff that, that we need to hear. And he still has to take care of himself, including the family. You know, and we think that's an easy job. You know, we think it's just like, oh, it's just pastoring. You can try, though. You want to come up here 52, 52 times a year? And like come up with messages like I'm only like once a month or so the past couple of months. But I'm just like, oh, what am I doing? What am I speaking about this and tomorrow? You know, just all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stress. But be cautioned because sometimes we often fall into the same sin that we are trying to save them from. Hence, take good care of yourself. Tell the person next to you, take good care of yourself. So three things in, for this part. Look out for others. Encourage and build each other up. Look after each other. And this is what God calls us to do in these last days. Take care of your spirit spiritually. Take care of your sp self, sorry, spiritually. Your soul, get right with God. No amount of activity or accomplishment can fill the void. Only Jesus can. You can have all the greatest things. You could own 20 million McDonald's and still be void. You can have all the money. You can have all the, the nicest of things, you know. There's nothing wrong with those things, but we got to take care of the first part first because we could fill all these things with stuff, accomplishments. And for those of you guys who are type A, like checking off the lists, you know, like getting all things done and stuff like that. But if our spirit is still dry, no checklist can ever pour in water into that dryness. Only Jesus can. Amen. If you still don't have Christ, and, and I tell you, this is the this is Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And He has He has told us, Come to me, all who are weary. Some of you guys here are weary, and you're just like, Oh yeah, I really did, I really do need to take care of myself. You know, you're you need to take a step back. And remember, taking a step back doesn't mean you're being selfish. It doesn't mean that you take a step back and you're just like, I got to take care of myself. This is what I always think of every time I sleep at night or every time like when we were out on the hike, long, long uh, few days hike, you know, I'm thinking I got to rest. I got to eat. Even if I didn't like the food I was eating, I just got to get this in my body because I got to keep walking more. Spiritually, what are we bringing into our spiritual body so we can continue to walk in more? 
We need that spiritual calories to keep us going. And some of you guys need more calories than the others. Some of you guys can keep going by just one verse a day. And some of you guys need five chapters a day to keep you going. And you know what? Find your rhythm. Find your rhythm. And, and I want to ask you right now, maybe you don't have this relationship with God. And you're just like, how do I even begin? In the beginning, God. <laughs> That's how he began. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you, in the beginning, God. He's going to begin there. It all starts with who created you. He has, a, he has a leader's manual to what's going on in your life. He knows exactly what to do, even if you try to put things together by just looking at the pictures. You know, God is saying, come to me. I will give you this fresh, renewed life that you needed. It's like living for the first time. Because it is living for the first time when we receive Christ into our lives and saying, God, I just want you. If you don't even understand all these things, we can explain it further to you in a deeper level. And, and right now you're just saying, I just, I'm just ready. I'm just ready to give my life to Christ. If that's you today, put a thumbs up on Facebook. And if that's you here today, just repeat after me with this prayer. <laughs> you can also put a thumbs up if you want to. That's fine. Or a heart. You know. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I want to take good care of myself. Starting right now, I want to give my life to you. I can only take good care of me if you take care of it first. So right now I surrender. I give you everything. From now on, I will live for you. And even if I don't fully understand yet, I will trust you. And I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Maybe today you're, you're not a new, you're not an unbeliever that just became a believer, but you are a believer that you know this is something that you've been needing for a very long time. It's kind of like this desert and you have this water. I have experienced what it's like to not have water for miles and miles and miles and my, my throat is dry and you think you're going to die, but you just have to keep going with all the reserves that you have in you. But here's the thing, we don't have to because God is saying, I am the brook, I am the spring that's constantly going. You, can, you don't have to filter. Mine is free, mine is pure, mine is clean. You can just come and get a drink. And maybe that's you here today, and you're feeling like, oh, I really need that today. I need to take care of myself today, and I need to take care of others. Maybe you're just like feeling so good, but you're just like, what else do I have to do? Let me tell you, take care of others. Take good care of others. There are others who are in need of spiritual stuff right now. That's just, that's how God humbles us, you know? If you're constantly about yourself, you're off rhythm. But when you're about others all the time, you're off rhythm too. It needs to be this nice cycle of things. You gotta dance with this rhythm of life that God has given us to enjoy it. Just like music, we enjoy the rhythms of it because that's just the way it is. It would be weird if it's just like monotone or like just always ta 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 or if it's ta 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 you know, there's different kinds of stuff. I'm not trying to beatbox or anything, but if that's you, would you just put your hand out? And maybe everybody will put their hand out. And for those of you guys who are at home watching right now, just put your hand out and receive. Lord Jesus, I pray for every person who is needing that rest, who is needing to have this wonderful rhythm of life go, have to go through and renewal in their lives, God. I pray that in the quiet and in the moments, Lord God, where they meet with you, Lord, that you would just embrace them. You would comfort them if they need that today, Lord. If they need a little nudge, if they need help, God, I just pray, Lord, that they will not be afraid to ask for help. They will not be afraid to seek help, God. And for those who have the ability to help, I pray, God, that you remove any distractions of focus, that they will be able to go to that person and say, I can help you. I can, I can guide you. I can give you a ride. Or I can, I, can, I can pray for you. I can call you every day and, and check in with you. So, Lord God, I pray that as believers, that we would be people who will be just like you, recharging ourselves in order for us to have a, a greater ministry not just ministry that are that we know it lord god as a, a church or or anything of that sort but ministry because we are living for you and we are working for you on a day-to-day -day basis no matter which assignment you have given us in 
So, Lord God, I pray for a refreshing to fall in each and every person here today, Lord. And we just want to glorify you. We want to honor you for what you are doing in our lives, Lord. You are so gracious to us, God. Even if many times we have messed up so much, you still give us grace after grace after grace after grace after grace after grace. Because, Lord, you are grace. And we praise you. We receive your grace today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God is good. Amen. And today, I just want to say, for all of us, I know I mentioned this earlier, but for a lot of us that, that have been taking care of ourselves, there's always a person that takes care of us here at the church. And um, God is good because God has given us pastor who has been faithful week after week. And did you know, I'm going to have to expose pastor a little bit, in the beginning of the year when we had this COVID thing, we didn't know what to do, like... You know, we all got to work together, like just assuring each other, this is what we need to do. You know, we got to be at home and we had our little, even snow had a little portion of, you know, going up on stage during worship, like one of the live streams we had, but we just had to work together. But can I read this to you guys? And this is what we're going to do today. Pastor, sorry, we're going to take a little bit of time. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 to 13, Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. How many of you guys have received spiritual guidance from the Lord through pastor? I would say maybe 90 or, or so percent of the people here, including myself, have been saved under the leadership of pastor. We have people helping us here who are now pastors of bigger churches. Come on now. Our reach is big. We have all these things. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work and live peacefully with each other. That was interesting. All of a sudden, all these words about like honor your leaders and stuff. And it says leave, leave, live peacefully with each other. Because pastor is aware that when we don't live peacefully with each other, that's also a problem for him. You're going to have to do counseling at 12 midnight. You know, answer the phones and stuff like that. But today we want to honor pastor. We have a little thing that we want to show um, that our media guys have prepared for us. And um, as soon as you guys are ready, we will uh, watch this short video. We have some technical difficulties, so bear with us. Stand up and stretch and do all kinds of stuff while you guys are waiting. Happy Pastor's Appreciation Day, Pastor. Hi, Pastor. Happy Appreciation Day. Hi, Pastor. Hi, Pastor. Um, on behalf of the youth, I just want to say Happy Pastor Appreciation Day. Um, despite everything that's going on, um, we're very thankful for everything that you're doing for us to um, keep learning more about God. 
and we're very appreciative uh, appreciative of you and we love you very much um thank you for reaching out to every single one of us um even though it feels like apostle paul and you're sending letters out to the churches that you know were kind of uh, spread out um but thank you for your efforts to continuing to reach out and uh, helping us grow in our spiritual walk and in the word thank you so much you have a great pastor's appreciation day may you be honored doubly Day you pastor for teach uh by jesus thank you for all you done and for teaching everyone about God and bye. Hey Pastor, on behalf of the Praise and Worship team, we want to wish you a happy Pastor Appreciation Day. We miss those days that you used to play keyboard with us, but we appreciate you for how you're leading us by example, how you're teaching us the Word of God and answering all of our questions and helping us grow. We thank you and we love you. On behalf of the uh, Ezekiel group, uh, happy Pastor's Appreciation Day. Uh, I know it's, uh, it's not only like today, it's uh, uh, Appreciation Day uh, for pastors, but we always, uh, we always appreciate you, Pastor, for what you've been doing to us uh, and the way you've been leading us in our group, the way you've been teaching us, you know, by the, uh, through the words. Uh, and again, it's, it's really so our expressing our sincere th uh, thanks for what you've been doing to us in our group. So again, Pastor, thank you and happy Pastor's Appreciation Day today. On behalf of the Women's Ministry on this Pastor Appreciation Day, we just want to say thank you, we love you for your diligence always to teach us um, about the Word of God and how you live it out uh, in your life and with your family. We love you so much, God bless you, Pastor. Thank you, Papa Pat, for teaching us how to listen to God, I love you. Hi, Pastor, on behalf of Young Adult, just want to say happy Pastor Appreciation Day. And um, just want to thank you for everything that you've done to our church. And, you know, doing beyond your capacity, Pastor. Just want to really appreciate you. And I hope you enjoy your day. Thank you, Pastor, for everything. God bless. Hi, Pastor. On behalf of the young adults and the even more young adults, we want to thank you, Pastor, to us. Through the years, Pastor, I've always admired the way you always want to give grace first. To people and to show love and your selflessness is always an inspiration and encouragement to me and my family and our church and we just want to thank you for your service for your faithfulness and for your passion for uh, sharing the gospel we thank you so much and we love you we we love you bye Um, I'm gonna, hello, hello mic test. We're gonna call up our council members, keep all, we'll just hang on for a bit. Um, and they just, uh, we are gonna present just a little bit, token of appreciation. So Pastor, you can come up here and and um, we have our Kuyuju and Ezekiel group and our FCF uh, council. Senator Edmund is here today, woo! He's running for a council member in, um, in Section Kingdom of Jesus. And I'm going to turn it over to Atjebo. OK. Where's my six feet? Bots are going to be up here. All right, this is like cha-cha. Can you guys hear me? No. Hello. All right. Surprise, Pastor. Woo -hoo. Were you surprised? Yes. Okay, um, we would like to give you a little token of appreciation from our council and our church. So, Congressman Edmund, go ahead. Okay, don't forget to vote. <laughs> Pastor, in appreciation of your passion, your compassion, and your guiding and teaching us the word of God, and in to be a truly followers of God of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we give you this kind of token.
open it? He has to open it to demonstrate and apply God's word that we learned today. It's a picture Yay! of gift cards from Amazonia, Trader Joe's, or Trader Joe's, and Costco. But there's a part two also, Pastor Raider. Oh, this is also part of your gift card. And last one? Yes. And we chose those things because these are things that Pastor, um, these are things that Pastor uses and likes to purchase from, not necessarily for himself, but for his family and for the church. <laughs> so um, he didn't even open part two yet. He'll see. Um, but we just wanted to give him stuff for him to take care of him. So inside this bonbon is his boba funds. <laughs> so that's for him, Pastor. So um, that's a jar. Pastor, and yes, there's another one from another. This is the time where Pastor has to take good care of himself so he can serve us better, right, guys? I mean, he has to fill in to pour out, right? There you go. Fill in more boba. Lord, for those who make a difference, who live out their faith with kindness and care, we share your love in so many ways, big and small. We gratefully say thank you. Okay, there's a lot of greetings here. So. The greetings are not that important. This chase envelope is important. No, no, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Right there. Um, you want me to open it? No. Okay, no. Thank you. Last, last one. one. Yes, ma'am. Um, Pastor, since the message was very timely. So we didn't even plan it. Yeah. <laughs> And you know how we, you always, as a servant leader, you want us to take an oath. So we want you to take an oath. <laughs> take an oath. An oath. <laughs> because knowing you, you always um, give your last dollar to whoever's in need. So just repeat, Paul. <laughs> I, pa you can put on your Bible. I, Pastor Adrian and Ona. I, Pastor Adrian and Ona. Do hereby promise. Do hereby promise. To utilize every item. <laughs> to utilize every item. Of the pastor's appreciation gift. Uh, of the pastor's appreciation gift. Here given by the people. Given by the people. Of Faith Celebration Fellowship. Of Faith Celebration Fellowship. For personal use. <laughs> For personal use. Not for any other item. Not for any other item. Such as ministry. Huh, such as ministry. Family. Family. Ooh. Or any other item. Or any other item. Outside of its intended designation on this. Well, oh, sorry. <laughs> outside of its intended. Outside of its intended. Designation. Designations. On the this. 25th of October 2020. On this 25th of October 2020. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Council, thank you very much. FCF, thank you very much. And sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I've made an oath. <laughs> all the Amazon purchases goes to Pastor because we all know Jeff Bezos is getting rich. Um, we're going to be praying for pastors. If you guys are out there, um, if you guys are out there in your seats, please stand up. And for those of you guys who are with us on Facebook, you guys can just stretch your hand out to pastor as we pray uh, a prayer of appreciation and dedication and just us showing our love to him. And I want to encourage you guys that even after here, I know maybe you weren't on the video or, or you're not here on stage. I'm just going to encourage you guys to personally thank pastor and appreciate him whether it be through text or or a phone call, FaceTime, or, you know, 
whatever you want to do to to show your appreciation to pastors. So Kia June. All right, let's uh, you could uh, put your hands and uh, as we pray for pastor. Father God, we thank you, Lord, so much again for this uh, a day of appreciation for our pastor. It's not what I said. It's not always. It's not only the day that we appreciate him, Father. We appreciate him, Lord, for his uh, dedication, Lord, in this church, his, his passion, Lord, of loving you and, and Lord, and giving all his best, Lord, for you. Thank you, Lord, for uh, his patience also, Lord, for our, uh, for us leading us, Lord, especially in our group, maybe, uh, <laughs> you know, so, so, so diligently, Lord, and so patiently, Lord, teaching us, Lord, of your word, Father God. As we have said, Father God, um, in your message today about you know taking care of him, of himself of ourselves lord may you also lord, take uh, take care of himself father god so that lord he can take care of us also lord and both in physical lord and in spirit father god we thank you lord for uh, for his life for giving us to us lord our pastor here in our church father god father as we even lord uh, want to pray for him to embrace lord embrace him uh, empowered him lord you know, Lord, uh, with your spirit, Lord, as he continue, Lord, serving you, Lord, uh, in this church and even, Lord, the other people, Lord, Father God. We thank you, so, Lord, so much. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you, Lord. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor. And, um, Again, encouraging for you guys to um, take that moment to appreciate Pastor. We're going to call yeah. Kate Paul for the announcements. Thank you, Council. And Pastor will be back for the benediction. Morning's Mike. Test. Hi. Hello. Oh. All right. I'll make it quick. Um, I'm really impressed by everyone's, uh, our speakers, like metaphors, Bell's metaphors, Pastor's metaphors. I'd be up here like... Uh, have, do you have dry skin, itchy skin caused by the world? You need to cover yourself with the Holy Spirit lotion. Okay, a couple of announcements. The tithes and offering, you can still give through PayPal, Cash App, or uh, the black box that's in the back table. If you guys are here physically and would like to drop off a check, you can do that with the, with the box over there. And, um, and as always, our prayer warriors are ready to receive your requests. So if you have any requests, please send a, a message if you're online and or you I think you can put it on the I think a card, right? For the to drop off in the box. Young adults is tonight at five o'clock. So take note of the time change. We're starting at five tonight until six thirty. And all the Bible studies will continue online on Zoom. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, FCF, thank you very much for the surprise. It was a surprise. Did not expect that. Very seldom do you succeed in surprising me like that. But thank you so much. So good to see a lot more people today. Angela, we've been praying for you. We've been waiting for you. Yeah, I've been, I've been looking for you every Sunday. So, so good to see you. So good to see you. Uh, thank you for all the gifts. Okay, thank you for all the gifts. Uh, I don't think that, I don't know, I want to honor the council, so we'll still share FCF. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use my personal money. <laughs> right? So thank you very much. Thank you for the beautiful words of appreciation. You know, every time, every time we come to an appreciation like this, it's very humbling because you know that, because you know, <laughs> Because you know that uh, uh, you, you almost feel like they're saying a lot more than um, they're outperforming you, basically, with their comments. So, but thank you so much for the generosity of your compliments. Um, you, always have, uh, you almost always have to struggle thinking that it's not your eulogy, you know? <laughs> when you're hearing all those words, praise God for those, right? I don't have to wait until I die before they see all those good, good words and I'm able to enjoy it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the greatest gift that, that you could give me, if, if ever, is that if you still don't know, it's, you, the greatest gift you could give me is helping me fulfill my purposes and mission 
here in this church, and one of them, one of the most, or one of the foremost, is to lead you into a personal relationship of salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if that's something that, that you're not sure of, that you don't have, um, step forward, not basically for me, but for yourself. Let it be, your gift to me will be when you give that beautiful gift to yourself, making sure that you do have this saving, loving, vibrant, eternally assuring and securing relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And that's my, the one of my foremost, utmost prayer for every one of you. Okay? So God bless everyone again. Thank you so much for coming. By the way, this is Pastor's Appreciation Month. We don't have Pastor Gilbert here. We have Pastor Ron. Okay, we'd like to also appreciate your services. His church is out there with all those different hospices. He's a chaplain. How many, how many places do you, are you a chaplain of? Five. He goes to five facilities, basically, and pastoring those people there who are not able to go to church on Sunday. So, Pastor, happy appreciation to you. Praise God. All right, everybody, please stand. Let's go ahead. We're going to go raise your hands with a blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you once again for coming to FCF. What a beautiful weather. Everybody say praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. See you. God bless.